Welcome to the K-State Research and Extension Ed Talks. Hi, my name is Sandra Wick. I am the Post Rock District uh, Crop Production Agent. Uh, Post Rock District covers Jewel, Lincoln, Mitchin, Mitchell, Osborne, and Smith Counties. We also have with us today... Hi, I'm Stacy Campbell. I'm the County Extension Agent for the newly formed Cottonwood Extension District, which is Hayes and Great Bend. So today we'd like to share with you information uh, about some on-farm research that we have, Stacy and I have both been working with, along with some demonstration test plots. This involves uh, collaborating with not only our local producers, but also with a K-State Research and Extension agronomist. Mm -hmm. um, so what we're gonna be sharing with you uh, here this morning in our first session is um, information about kind of what on-farm research is and how it was started. So why do we do the on-farm research as extension agents? We can do comparisons of, of many things or we can maybe just compare one thing, such as one of the very common things that we do probably here in Kansas, being that Kansas is the wheat state, is we do quite a few um, wheat variety demonstration plots and in those variety demonstration plots one of the main things we're doing is we're looking at varieties that we're comparing for yield but we also can incorporate other things in there we can look at tillage methods as to whether it's no till minimum till or conventional till uh, we can also evaluate herbicide treatments if we wanted to we know that it's getting more difficult to control some of these harder resistant herbicide resistant weeds and then as I mentioned already, we, we always look at the variety performance as to which varieties might be performing better in our area compared to, uh, to some of our older and newer varieties. And then we can even look at fertilizer sources and rates if we wanted to in these plots, even different, potentially even different methods of chemical application and other crop inputs as well. So how did all this started? It started a little over 100 years ago by a gentleman by the name of Seaman Knapp. He was one of our extension pioneers. He felt like if farmers were going to buy into what experiment stations and, and extension agents were starting to do, that seeing is believing, that they needed to be able to see the actual results, the studies, the on-farm demonstrations, actually on farmers' fields. So that's uh, how one of the one of the three uh, legs of, of, the, of the stool of how Extension got started is doing these on-farm trials uh, with farmers. We were looking you know, at studying different types of, of uh, soil conditions and crop production practices. The purpose of on-farm research or demonstration uh, test plots with K-State Research and Extension, uh, one of the main thrusts of our organization is unbiased research-based information. And as we mentioned, we can do that by looking at a number of things. We can look at different wheat varieties. We can look at different uh, milo and corn and soybean hybrid performance tests as well. We can look at planting dates, seeding rates, different fertilizer sources, fertilizer amounts, um, herbicide treatments, and the, the, the scope of it can just be never ending if we really get down to it. So that's what uh, Extension, one of our main focuses is, is to just do some on-farm research with the farmers in our counties to where they can see what's going on, they can come out and ask questions and uh, visit with some of our specialists and Extension agents through, uh, during this process. Okay, so let's look at now kind of the procedures and how we go about setting up that on-farm research, whether it be on-farm research or actually the demonstration test plots that Stacy mentioned to you about. So the first point is to clearly define your purpose or objective of what we hope to mm -hmm. accomplish with, with the research. It could even be as simple as, you know, Stacy talked about um, using a conventional tillage compared to a no tillage, right. you know, it, having those comparisons, or even as simple as, um, cl clearly comparing um, uh, variety A with variety B. Okay, the next step is to, s to soil test. Okay, that's really critical in order to know where you're at as far as the level of nutrients. Mm -hmm. So, um, and you really need to take a very representative sample of the whole field and not just one area. The next step would be to identify the different treatments in the study, whether it be a variety plot 
or, or whether it would be a fertilizer source that you talked about or herbicide treatments. And there's different ways to set up those tests. You can either have it a replicated plot and randomize that, or you can use check strips. Um, in, in a randomized plot or replicated plot, all you're simply doing is planting that or doing that treatment three to four times in that one area and then randomly mm -hmm. within those treatments. Uh, using check strips is really what extension agents may be doing more in the seed companies just because uh, they maybe not have the specialized equipment and plus uh, as far as limited room in that regard. All right. Let's take a look at the crop and field history. Uh, you always want to look at the previous uh, soil and crop management uh, practices that you use. Along with uh, previous soil tests are always real important, so you can track the soil test in that. Um, you also want to record some primary tillage operations. That can really uh, impact the response of what you're going to be getting out. Uh, so whether that be conventional or no-till. And lastly, kind of note and um, document any similar management history that you may have with the test that you're no wanting to accomplish. All right, uh, the next step would be to actually record any um, observations that you see during the growing season, whether that be weather conditions. That would probably be the first thing on your mind. You know, put a rain gauge out there. That's really simple. So then um, after we do get a rain, record those and actually empty the rain gauge. It's important to do that too, because uh, that could really impact your yeah. findings. Um, record any insects or disease uh, things that might happen, like the date of when it was, um, and then any growth characteristics that you might have. So at the end of, of the day, when we are ready for harvest, we're going to measure out the, the plot size, the area of it, the length and the distance, and, and the width of our harvesting equipment. Uh, some extension agents on their demonstration plots will go ahead and use the farmer's equipment, and they may put out a, a bigger plot that's 30 foot wide and five, 600 foot long, and the farmer may use his combine. Um, sometimes other extension agents, if they're close to experiment stations or, or whatnot, may be able to have a small combine come harvest their plot area that the experiment stations use. But basically we're going to measure out that plot area, we're going to record the grain weight, uh, typically with a, with a weigh wagon, but also if you're using a small plot combine it can weigh on the go. Um, and even with the large combine, if the yield monitor is calibrated, we can use the yield monitor to get our results of our yields as well. And of course, we'll also collect the moisture content test weight, uh, sometimes even the protein, and then we'll calculate those yields. Okay, and so let's look about sharing the results yes. then, because that's an important thing. Um, K-State Research and Extension, you know, we're all out about sharing what we have learned. Right. So we publish our research findings. We also host tours that you can see here in the picture uh, in, in order to share that information. Several counties around Northwest, North Central, all over the state will have uh, wheat plot tours, mm -hmm. uh, usually in May and June. And then the, the published data that K-State does is we will uh, publish some... Uh, uh, documented information mm -hmm. from the wheat test plots for the, for the for the producers. And and here is the wheat yeah. book. Uh, th that and, and here's just one example of some published data that's available. There's also information available from the other spring row crops as well. Right. And one thing I was going to mention is is this is more the replicated data from the experiment stations. The county agent uh, demonstration plots are are not in, you typically Correct. in this book, but, but we'll get that information out to our growers through newsletters, through our website, uh, through our field days. Correct, correct. Okay, so for summary, remember to identify your purpose on what we're out there for, record your growing conditions, collect your harvest data, and uh, certainly the most important thing is to publish and share the information so we can help uh, producers make their management decisions. Right. So if you will, uh, we're going to take a little break here. So if you want to join us again, we're going to be heading out to the field now and going down to the Hayes Experiment Station mm -hmm. and visiting with uh, the wheat breeder. Um, and he'll show some information with you. Thank you. What a girl wants in her home kitchen. Ease of use, flexibility, fun, the latest kitchen design, Frigidaire Professional Real Stainless Steel for fewer finger smudges, a French door refrigerator, convection cooking, a quiet dishwasher. Have the staff at Genuine Appliance in Hayes demonstrate new Frigidaire professional appliances to find what you want. Genuine Appliance at 1224 East 27th in Hayes. Everything a girl wants. 
Hi. We're looking for insurance. Oh, let's see who's free. Jerry? When insurance agents work for only one company, Michael. their options are simply limited. Everybody! But a trusted choice independent agent is free to shop many companies for a better deal. Free to do what's right for you. Let us shop for you. Contact Rogers & Associate to learn more. Hello, welcome back to our K-State Ed Talks. My name is Sandra Wick. I'm the Crop Production Agent with the Post Rock Extension District of K-State Research and Extension. We are out here at the Hayes Research Center with K-State Research and Extension, and the wind is blowing, which is typical Kansas weather. So um, we'll, we'll try to combat the wind um, with our interview today. Today we are visiting with Dr. Garang Zhang, our wheat breeder with K-State Research and Extension here in the Hayes Research Center. So, uh, Gawain, can you just tell us maybe a little bit about yourself and your position here at the Research Center? Yeah, uh, I'm uh, the wheat breeder at the station, so I have been working here for over years, over six years, and uh, I worked uh, actually for plant breeding for over almost 20 years. So. Here, here at the station here, we have the field. Uh, it, this is the field for mostly our yield trial here, but we also have other field for doing some other 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 trial, other materials. Okay, okay. So for six years you've been at this site, but for over 20 years you've been with the wheat development. Uh, process. not not wheat development, just uh, in general crops. And, okay. Uh, you know, I worked on soybean. I worked on okay. the sweet cherry. I worked on the, you know, the uh, barley and okay. the spring wheat and all kinds of <laughs> crops. So. Alrighty. Yeah. Okay. So we are sharing with our audience today about on-farm research and demonstration plots around the state of Kansas. So this is one of the many um, extension research centers around the state with K-State Research and Extension. So can you share with us exactly what you do as a wheat breeder here at this station? And my position here as a wheat breeder mainly is uh, try to develop varieties for the western Kansas. And we have a breeder in main campus and his main focus is on the central and the eastern Kansas. Okay. So we have different environments. So here is more drought than the central and the eastern Kansas. Okay. We are focused on drought tolerance. Okay, so your target area is central and western Kansas in developing It's uh, for varieties. western Kansas, okay. just for west. Okay, yeah. and so what has been the most productive or high yielding varieties that producers need to be keeping an eye out for in their variety selection? Yeah, last uh, a couple of years we released the three new varieties. 2013 we released the uh, Oakley CL. And 2015 we released the Jew, and then 2016 we released the uh, Tatanka. And uh, Oakley CL and, uh, and the Tatanka are red wheat varieties, and the uh, Jew is a white one. For f all these three actually performed very well last few years, and uh, uh, based on the performance data in the last two years, like uh, actually Tatanka is the number one in Northwest. Kansas and uh, number two in Southwest. Then Joe is uh, number one in Southwest and then uh, number two in Northwest. So Oakley also did very well in Northwest. Uh, I think it's the same yield as the uh, Joe as the second uh, number number two variety. And then in Southwest, uh, Oakley still has a little bit of low yield, but still in the top six. So it's there very well doing very well. Okay, now all these varieties that you listed, the Oakley, the Tatanka, are, are, are they pretty readily available for producers and able, and able to get those? Yeah, I think uh, Tatanka just released the 2016, okay. so we have maybe have limited seed uh, seed uh, available, but uh, for the Joe and the Oakley seal should have a uh, uh, should have enough seed. And the Jew actually is the number one white variety in, in Kansas now. It's okay. the most popular variety. Most popular. So, okay. Yeah. And, and, and the Oakley CL, and that's your clear field wheat. Can you explain that a little bit? Uh, with, that, that herbicide resistant wheat with using Yeah, clear field wheat is kind of designed for 
you know, the, uh, the fields with uh, hard to control those uh, grassy weeds. Okay. So if your field has this kind of problem, if you can grow those clear field with like oakley seal. Okay. So if you spray the beyond on, in this field and then wheat, the variety will not die, the plants will not die, but those weeds will be all die out. So okay. it's very, you know, it's pretty convenient to control the weeds. So Very good. So if they have a grass problem, they may want to be looking at the Oakley CL. Yeah, right. Oakley CL also have the wheat streak mosaic virus resistance. So for like last year, we had a big, uh, you know, problem with the wheat streak mosaic virus and uh, you put the Oakley CL kind will help a lot. Also, Joe has the, also have the wheat streak mosaic virus okay. resistance. Yeah. And of course, the wheat streak mosaic virus is spread by the volunteer wheat yeah. and spread by the wheat curl mite. Yes. Okay, so can you tell us how long it takes for a new wheat variety to be developed and re released into production? Uh, to develop uh, develop a variety, actually, it's a very long process. It takes at least nine to 10 years. Okay. At the beginning, a few years, just uh, you know, develop, get those breeding lines. Then after that, we need about five to six years to test the yield in different different uh, environment and different years. So we can be pretty sure uh, when we are releasing it will be, you know, it's a kind of uh, most uh, in most the situation will be good, have good yield, have good performance. Okay, so nine to ten years before a new one, yeah. but from the time it's developed um, until time it's released. From time we start okay. you know, making a cross, okay. then to the release, release. but then nine to ten years. Okay, yeah. great. Okay, it, so how do you share the results um, for, for things that is accomplished through your wheat breeding program? Uh, normally we will have field day, so the farmers can come and we will demonstrate uh, those uh, new varieties and. Uh, also, we, we also publish the extension publications uh, for the new varieties. Also, we have uh, e-updates and uh, for the new new information. So those all will be available, can be available on the agronomy department uh, website. You can find those. Also, the performance data, actually the yield data will be published through the Kansas uh, wheat, uh, wheat seed book. So okay. those data also be available on the website. So, okay, yeah. and we mentioned that our the K-State Research and Extension wheat book in, mm -hmm. in, in our previous session. So yes. they can find that on the K-State Research and Extension website at www.ksre.ksu.edu. Yes. Okay, we're going to kind of close the session here. Uh, can you tell me what plans you may have for the future research out here at the research center? Uh, future research, uh, we will continue to try to improve the yield, the quality, and disease resistance. Actually, this year, we might have a new variety come out. It's a red one, so it have very high yield with drought tolerance and uh, we just and the wheat streak mosaic virus resistant and that resistant even have a higher temperature than the previous two I mentioned so it's a very good one okay so okay great okay so let's mention your field day again or where the producers can come out here and look at the varieties you said it was May 22nd yeah it's May 22nd we temporarily set that day so okay. we will show the varieties and also we have other topics like uh, new herbicide uh, new weed control systems also how to maximize the uh, wheat yield through okay. you know all kind of different uh, different uh, techniques and so okay great and stay tuned for uh, and you can contact any of your local extension offices to find out that time and, and everything for that field day and reminders of that so uh, we like to thank Dr. Garong Zhang our wheat breeder out here at the Hayes Research Center for uh, sharing information with us today and we're going to take a break here and we're going to move locations here we're going to be out at one of the uh, local demonstration wheat test plots here in Ellis County um, and we're going to be visiting with um, um, Stacy Campbell the Cottonwood District Ag Agent along with Lucas Haig our Northwest Region Agronomist. Your home's exterior is the best defense against harsh weather conditions with insulated vinyl siding, energy efficient windows, spray foam insulation, and metal roofing from AquaShield Roofing and Construction, you can protect your home from howling winds and ice cold temperatures. Don't let Mother Nature interfere with the comfort of your home. Call or visit us online today for a free estimate. 
AquaShield Roofing and Construction. Our team is dedicated to your complete satisfaction. Some mobile phone providers think they can just take, take, take. They'll all take an arm and a leg for a new phone. Got it. And look out if you go over your data limit. I didn't see that coming. Unlimited data plans as low as $20 per line. Come into any of our stores for a free, upfront, and honest consultation about your data and wireless needs. Next Tech Wireless, the carrier you trust. Well, welcome back, or if you're just joining us, welcome. I'm Stacy Campbell with uh, K-State Research and Extension with the Cottonwood District. I'm joined here with Sandra Wick, the Extension Agent in the Post Rock District, and Lucas Haig, who is our Northwest Area Extension Agronomist. Uh, we're doing Extension Ed Talks with Next Tech, Next Tech TV, and we're out here in a wheat field just north of Victoria where we have our uh, wheat demonstration plot here for Ellis County. And so we've got a little bit of wind, so hopefully uh, you can pick us up well uh, with our audio. And we're going to visit a little bit more about wheat demonstration plots that county agents do here with, with Extension and with our area agronomist. And uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Sandra here, and Sandra is going to talk a little bit more about that. Okay. So Stacy and I have been involved for several years with the demonstration wheat plot specifically and with some other on-farm research. So Stacy, can you just share with us how you determine where the location of your local demonstration plot is going to be? Okay, sure, Sandra. A lot of it is based on having a cooperator that that is willing and wants to put out a plot and has some interest in it. And, and then, of course, we, we visit with them about making sure that they're you know they're doing a good job with their weed control and fertility and and just you know line out kind of the time frame of when we do this and what equipment is going to be necessary and as if all those pieces come together then you know we've we've got a good marriage there if you will of us uh, putting out a, a wheat demonstration plot and the cooperator here uh, we've been doing the plot for a number of years really good person to work with okay so um, how many varieties um do, do you have here in this plot, and how do you go about a select, selecting sure. what you put in here? Yeah, we've got 13 varieties this year, and we range anywhere from about 13 to 16. I'm trying not to get over 16. Um, uh, my cooperator, Leon Kuhn, we use his equipment. He's got a 30-foot drill, so our plots are kind of bigger. They're 30 foot by five or 600 feet. Uh, we go ahead and plant them with his equipment, harvest it with his combine, of course, you know, weigh the grain and, and figure out what the yields are. As far as determining the varieties, um, we just look at varieties that look like they're adapted for the region. Obviously, we know some of our standard varieties that are being grown, we put those in, and then we're always incorporating some newer varieties that are coming out that look like that they, uh, they are agronomically you know, suited for, for this area. Okay, and you use uh, the full-size combine, you know, uh -huh. you know, just like a conventional combine to right. harvest this. H how do you share the results and the yields data from the Sure, plot? once we get the results, um, we try to get them up on the website. Um, then I'll, I do a weekly newspaper article, so I typically put those in the, in the newspaper as well. Um, we talk about, I do a monthly radio program. I'll, I'll visit with producers sometimes with the results there, or at least tell them they can go to the website and look at those results. They can always swing into the office and, and grab a paper copy as well. Okay, great. Uh, I'm going to turn it back over to you, Stacy, okay. um, and then you can ask me a few questions. Sure. Okay. Uh, Lucas is our Northwest Area Agronomist. He's based out of Kobe, but you cover about 26 counties. 29 counties. 29 now. Your area has grown. Yes. So, um, Lucas, uh, what? Um, can you share with us, you know, a couple of your research projects, kind of as a whole, maybe that you're doing uh, in in your area? Sure, Stacy. So we talked a, a lot about wheat already this morning, and of course we do got a lot of emphasis on wheat. And so, uh, you know, assisting in, in the demonstration plots where we can, but then also trying to look at some specific issues like the use of uh, urea in furrow mm -hmm. uh, with with wheat at planting time, and then in far northwest Kansas, wheat stem sawfly is a pest that's okay. that's coming our way that we're concerned about. So we're evaluating some new things like solid stem wheats. Uh, okay. Could they help us in that? I also spent a lot of time working in, in crops like corn, grain sorghum, and then field peas, which is kind of a new alternative crop for northwest and north central Kansas. Right, great. And how do you kind of share with producers, you know, your results and what and what's going on? Sure, so we try and get that information distributed through the e-updates, which okay. any producer can sign up for uh, through K-State Agronomy, the weekly newsletter. 
uh, then the Cover Your Acres Conference, which happens every January mm -hmm. in Oberlin. And, uh, and, and again, try and get that information out and available and, and hopefully also through the county agents, pick some of that up and, and stick it into the local newsletters. Right. We also maintain a, an active website okay. uh, where I, I put all of our information relevant to Northwest Kansas. Okay, okay. And of course, uh, mentioning working with extension agents, you work with a lot of extension agents. And what would you say your role is uh, working with those extension agents and with uh, the demonstration plots and the research they do? So I, I guess I view that role as being trying to be a facilitator, provide the expertise that I can, you know, making sure we're getting plots laid out in a way that's statistically valid and, and, and helps us give some results that we can have confidence in. Right. So. Okay. Yeah. And of course, I know you, you come to our wheat demonstration field days and, and uh, help us with those and visit with the producers about, about the, the different varieties and other agronomic things going on. So. Yeah. The, the demo plots are a great teaching tool. I mean, it really gives producers an opportunity to to see the differences in these varieties and and, uh, and we look at enough of these across the state, our state specialists and us area specialists, we see enough of these we can start to, to see some underlying trends in, in these varieties and how where they're best adapted. Right, right. Well we appreciate your time Lucas, we're going to turn it back over to Sandra to kind of wrap this up. Okay, okay. Um, some other things, and we, we've talked about the traditional wheat test plot tours and we've added some other uh, studies and things in, in some of the wheat plots as well. Um, and some of the things that both Stacy and I have been involved with were some starter pea uh, or some starter phosphorus studies that we're collaborating with some agronomists at, at K-State. We've also done some nitrogen sensor-based studies, um, not only here but in several locations around the state as well. Some other kind of tests that we're doing out there just besides the traditional variety trials would be some micronutrient tests, maybe some with sulfur. It seems like that nutrient tends to be um, you know, kind of of interest to producers lately. Some chloride rates and sources, that's kind of been an issue with the wheat. Uh, some other things, not only with wheat too, but we've done some seeding rates with milo and with soybeans as well. So what we'd like to do is just to thank you for joining us today. Um, and, and hopefully you've learned some information about our on-farm research and demonstration test plots that we do out here. Um, if you're interested in participating in any of the demonstration plots or on-farm research that you have a topic or production practices that you're wanting to test, contact either Lucas, Stacy, or I um, in any of our offices, or you can find us online at www.ksre.ksu.edu. So thanks again for joining us today. Thank you.